Hello, friends, and welcome to Season 2, Episode Number 8 of the VIP Collective. I'm your host, Karim McDonald, and on today's episode, my guest is Reed Lamshed, owner and artist extraordinaire behind Will Reed Photography. Now, in today's episode, we discuss a number of things. One being his journey and passion for storytelling through photo. Number two is your podium placement. And number three is bringing on your creative team, both photo and video, and your planner prior to your wedding day to assess your lighting so you have the best results with both photo and video. Lots of takeaways, so buckle up and let's go because this is my conversation with Will Reed Photography. Thank you. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. So, as I like to start, for everyone who's watching and are listening, because we are both <laughs> video and audio, we are with Reed of Will Reed Photography. Technically, I'm, I'm William Reed Lambshed. Yes. So, I want to address this right off the bat. Okay. Your Instagram handle is at Will Reed, Reed photo. photo. Yeah. Which you think might be a bit confusing. Oh, totally. Because Reed <laughs> is a typical is. last name. Reed's a typical last a name. A more common last name than a first name. Correct. So yeah. how do you go around this? Why'd you do it? <laughs> I, I know. It sounds so... Okay, well, it's funny that you say that because I, I didn't want to... Now here it's going to be out in the world, but I didn't want to have Lamb's Head be a thing right. as much, especially when it came to my handle, um, website. Um, I just wanted it to be a little bit more cleaner and um, a lot easier to find, you mm-hmm. know, and... And I felt like Lamb's Head could be a little bit more like, I just don't want that to be a thing. So I thought I can go by my first and middle name, which is typical. That's very typical. Maybe maybe not typical, but it happens. Yeah. And so I was like, I'll just do that. Will Reed sounds a lot cleaner, easy to say. And then uh, and then I think it has made it more confusing, you know. But how many people on a wedding day are calling you Will? Not often, but I've, I've had some like past clients that have always called me Reed email me again and say hey well i'm like oh gosh so i'm like whatever I've, I've i've had it my whole life yeah. my since my parents thought william reed lambshed sounded better or flowed better than reed william lambshed right um i've just always I've, i answered it both so why don't we give a little briefing about sure. so you are known as an international wedding photographer is that how you describe sure. yourself sure yeah you do have the american and the canadian yeah, flag totally. in the bio Yes, 100%. Right? But like, I, I thought maybe like, like, I, I have shot some more like international, like in Europe and uh, New Zealand and everything, yeah. but a lot more in the States and US, yeah. Gotcha. I guess that's international. That would be international. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> North America. So why don't you give everyone a little background into what you do? So obviously your wedding photography. Yeah, I do wedding photography. Um, I'm a fine art film photographer, so I use medium format film as my primary um, medium of choice. Uh, and I try to shoot film as much and as long as possible mm-hmm. on every wedding day. Um, yeah, I focus on the on the more of the luxury market. I've always just been drawn to storytelling, this and the storytelling aspect of photography. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm a huge suck, like I was telling you already. I'm a huge suck, and I've always been like super nostalgic and uh, sentimental. And finding photography was like a huge light bulb moment for me because I was like. I've always wanted to like relive memories and go back in time and and uh, when I realized I could actually tangibly hold on to these memories mm-hmm. I was like oh, this is amazing and create them yourself like yeah. you get to be the creator yeah and then do it for other people mm-hmm. like what a gift mm-hmm. I don't know I just I, I so just being nostalgic and photography has just been such a natural career for me so when did it start um, so I started I went to Sheridan College for their commercial photography program yeah. in 2008 uh, graduated in 2010, started doing photography, like trying to make money doing photography in 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want to do a summer job in between the two years, so I was like, oh, I'll just start. Actually, my brother-in-law encouraged me. He's like, just go do it. Work for yourself. Don't get some random job. Just go do it. I was like, are you serious? How can I? <laughs> so I shot a few family sessions and um, didn't make much money at all, um, but that's when I started in 2009 and then quickly ramped up into wedding photography. Um, my, the program was largely commercially based, so more adverti- advertising, editorial, and I started in that arena and then quickly just transitioned to, into weddings because I just felt it 
to be a lot more meaningful and mm-hmm. um, yeah, just a lot more meaningful work. More story you know? to it. Totally. Yeah. I mean, there's something really cool about seeing a picture of a watch that you took on, on a billboard in Toronto, right? Of course, yeah. But like, it just it felt not that it's meaningless. Um, just it just felt like I, I, I would, just giving people that their memories mm-hmm. to actually hold on to and, and to relive is is much more uh, impactful and meaningful. Plus, a billboard watch can come down. And, um, it's only there for a month or so, right? It's there for a month. It's there yeah. for the promo, and then, and then it, it goes on your away. website, and then you're kind of like, okay, next. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like. You're gonna give a photo to a couple, and they're gonna have it on their wall, or yeah. wherever they're gonna have it. And their mm. kids are gonna see it. Their yeah. grandkids, their nieces, their nephews. Yeah. You know the way that I, I I try to approach every wedding is to, I always tell my, my my couples I want your kids, your grandkids to look at your photos and feel like they were there. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I'm obsessed with this message right now. Really? Yeah. Okay, tell me. From a video standpoint, is mostly what I talk yeah. about, but yeah. like. A lot of people opt out of video, but at the end of the day, it comes down to 20 years from now when they get to watch mm-hmm. their mom and dad give a speech. Mm-hmm. They get to watch, and their kids get to watch them totally in there when they're youthful and in love and giving yeah. speeches and like their voice. And like for me, it comes down to like the generations below you being able to have that. That's oh, f- that's what it means 100%. for me. But it's the same, and it's the same for photo. You're getting that like everything, everything, still. <clears throat> everything about a wedding day is the generations of love stories before mm-hmm. the one that you're actually photographing, videoing, mm-hmm. um, and the, the the foundation that they've laid towards the, that story, and then your kids, your grandkids, all the few generations to come as well. Mm-hmm. You know, you're 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 telling the story from perspective of the his the historical perspective, but also what you want to show your kids and future generations of who you guys were in, in your exactly. own story, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's super important. Like we have, we have two kids, um, four and two, Paige and Wyatt. Mm-hmm. And Paige- two. Little girl, little boy? Yeah. So Paige always like asks, Emily, my wife, always asks like, can we see the photos of you in your white dress? And mm-hmm. like wants to go through that. And yeah. um, having that perspective, having kids now even more so, video, like, be able to have that kind of um, story to be able to share to them is mm-hmm. like she loves it. Like Paige just like is this doe eye just looking at everything and just could not just trying to take it all in and yep. wow you guys dressed up and did this and did that and she's only four right mm-hmm. how much more meaningful is it going to be as she grows up yeah she sees it as like a magical totally princess day or, Total, you know oh a hundred percent like a fairy tale they get to watch okay so you're shooting film yeah still still okay. yeah yeah. I mean, as as the years have, have gone on, I've um, I've worked tirelessly to try to make sure that my digital work, when I need to shoot it, is a cohesive match to my my film work. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the edits have, have come a long way since like ten years ago. Being able to to be able to make that more of a cohesive collection for sure. But um, something about the process of shooting film, uh, you just feel much more um, a part of the moment. And um, I found that even when I started shooting film, which is probably 2012, 2013, mm-hmm. I just became, immediately became a better photographer just because I had to be much more focused and aware of my surroundings. Um, I was looking less at the back of my camera, more of through the viewfinder because I didn't matter what I just took because I could never see it, you know? And so um, it was a lot more of a proactive than, rather than reactive approach as well to, to, to shooting. Because film's expensive, number one. Yeah. And you're not going to be snapping like you are digital. Totally. So you're going to be framing up each shot. You're a lot more careful, and you're not just taking a <clears throat> bunch of dud shots. You're taking... The shot. The shot. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and not like you're missing moments either. Um, you're, you're, you're still taking enough, but there's something about... Um, yeah, just being much more aware of what's happening in the frame and composition-wise and just looking for those beautiful moments. So does that tie into the fine art? Like when you describe yourself as fine art photographer, yeah, exactly. How does that? Tie yeah, in? fine art. It's just a lot more of an art, artistic, um, interpretive approach to capturing a wedding day as well. Sure, it's the medium, mm-hmm. but it's also um, like I love movement and images. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm obsessed with create. As much as I hate using this buzzword, authentic, but like obsessed with creating authentic images, images that directly reflect the couple in front of you. Mm-hmm the event, whatever you're taking. So sometimes including movement is is something that I just absolutely love doing because it's um, it's not this 
super crisp, hyper sharp image. You know, it's something, it's like a real moment, like whether they're dance, especially when we're doing a first dance or um, the recessional coming back down the aisle. Uh, mm-hmm. There's like joyful moments, a little bit of movement really tells a different side of that story. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, fine artist, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with a little more of an artistic interpretation of what, obviously we're taking sharp images, <laughs> but like adding more of those beautiful artistic kind of, kind of uh, perspectives as well. So are you doing digital at all on wedding days or is it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I find that digital for me really um, comes to play when there's low light and Mm -hmm. um, that's just where digital really excels over film. Um, So low light scenarios, uh, maybe some faster moments as well. Um, I always have a film loader with me to make sure I'm not missing a moment. We have two or three inserts loaded at a time to make sure that it's a smooth transition between because you only get 16 shots per roll. With medium oh, format. Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Oh. Which uh, at first was like super stressful. Like, would you shoot film in a prep? In a prep. During, oh, during oh, like prep? getting ready. Sorry, yeah, 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 totally, hundred percent. These are Canadian terms, yeah. <laughs> or just my terms? Yeah. No, yeah, everyone uses different slide. terms. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, getting ready photos for sure. Yeah, yeah, as, as honestly as much and as long as possible, I'll, I'll be shooting film. Sixteen shots. Sixteen shots a roll. Yeah, it sounds stressful, doesn't it? Yeah. Like for like, what was that for you? Like a minute, I guess. I don't know. And in terms of like video, having only a minute per card. That would be or like. Or what would it be? Like well, a few yeah. minutes per card. Or if kind I'm of shooting thing? 8K or something, then it would probably sure. be like a minute a card. Yeah, and you're like, oh gosh, I need but a lot of But the thing is, I can still go and go back and delete things and yeah, keep using the card. Whereas you totally. can't. You can't yeah. erase it once it's been taken. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's it it's it's. I don't know, maybe it's just my, more so like goal-oriented or just like, this is amazing. Now I have 16 shots to make something amazing. You know, there's more of those boundaries, 16 shots, and then you, that's why I have a film loader. There's always another roll mm-hmm. and insert ready. Um, and that's another thing that's really nice about films, that it's a much more of a slower pace as well. Uh, with digital, sometimes mm-hmm. you get quickly just like, go, 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 go. But like with film, it's like, we don't need to go super fast here. I mean, sometimes you have to, right? right. Running behind, no whatever choice. you need to do. But like... Having more of a, I found that my, my couples really appreciate the slower pace and the more relaxed and calm type of pace mm-hmm. with with shooting film as well. And like I said, like you're you're just a lot more present, um, and I find that the couples can just relax a little bit more as well. So that being said, when there's a couple that comes to you and has like a number of different locations, do you mm-hmm. kind of try and steer them in a way that's going to create more of a calmness instead of like, oh, we're definitely gotta go, go, go or definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard because sometimes, especially, like, I, I had a few couples uh, a couple years ago that were like, okay, well, these, this location, this location, and this location are really important to us. We want to make sure we capture it all. And sometimes I say, well, maybe let's let's do one of those locations for an engagement shoot, you know, and then let's focus on maybe gotcha. one or one or two on your on your wedding day. And uh, if we can't do that, if we're not doing the engagement shoot, um, I usually try to minimize locations as much as possible just so that we can really focus like right. and my my whole goal is that for all my couples is that they actually feel like they're they're not being taken away from their wedding day and I'm not I'm not pulling them away to take photos mm-hmm. but we're actually taking photos as their day is happening mm-hmm. and the more logistical like you got to go here and then go there and go there you more, the more you feel more pulled away and more of a task it's more task oriented versus just let me experience my my day and let me capture it as you experience it I always like to know if there's tips or tricks for yeah. like calming someone down. Well, it's funny because I find that I, I turn into a counselor sometimes yeah. on a wedding day. I've had brides crying and, are we going to be able to make sure we get everything? Like, is we're running behind and family photos take too long or right. the ceremony started too late. And now, um, what's well, funny, so when I was trying to choose my career 2007, before I went to, to, to photography school, I was yeah. like, I'm either going to be a counselor Mm. or a photographer uh, that's the really? two. Oh yeah totally two different avenues right um and i just find it ironic that i sometimes end up turning into a counselor on on a, on a wedding day yeah <laughs> yeah i i have i have clients that ask me all the time okay you know what videographers do you like to work with like what any other vendors that you would refer because it's that sort of thing is really important to them and mm-hmm. for those clients that are, that are aware enough to ask those questions i think is so smart Mm -hmm. and it's um it just makes the day go by so much better when you're all on the same page and vibe is a huge thing for me Mm -hmm. Um, especially um when i've worked with like inexperienced videographers you can really tell that like 
their stress level is affecting everyone else. Right. When they, when they don't know what to do in a situation, when the lighting, they can't make the lighting work, or right. they start getting nervous and anxious, and then, like, I'm, like, trying to now calm them down. <laughs> the subtly. counselor's coming in. <laughs> yeah, subtly, because the bride's starting to stress out, or, you right. know, or the mom is starting to stress out, or... Right. And um, I've always... Just, I just want the day to go smoothly for everyone, mm-hmm. you know, and... Um, the more calm and collected you are, and um, the more calm your clients are going to be. Yeah, for Ca- sure. Counselor hat. So yeah. You have, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you have the harness <laughs> with the two cameras. I used to. I used to. I recently uh, got something else. Okay. I wanted to get the weight off my shoulders, so I actually wear this sort of belt thing that's underneath my suit, and you can't really tell. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's it's more of a that's yeah. It's smart. Like a, a, yeah, just so that everything's off your shoulders. There's Who a makes tip. it? Who makes it? Um, it's called, sp- I think, Spider Holster. It's a lot more of a SWAT style like thing that I never would have thought I would ever start wearing, especially to a wedding day. It just felt too techy, right. and gear gearhead like you know. But right. um, it's hidden well under under my suit, so you don't really see it. And it's the body armor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah, <laughs> show up in a trench coat. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be too intimidating. Yeah, you know. Right? So I used to have I used to have the the, the harness. The harness, okay. Yeah, like shooting the medium format camera, like it's heavy, mm-hmm. right? It's a lot of weight, um, and I'm not shooting mirrorless yet, so for digital, so like it's it's still quite heavy. Right. So I'm like, man, my back. I'm 33. Like, <laughs> I gotta take care of myself. I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be able to do this for. You know? Yeah. So. It is super taxing. So, what was the first wedding that you shot? Who was the first person the to first say? First one. Read. Obviously, it's I'm a friend, you. right? Yeah. Of um, uh, so I was fresh. At, I'm pretty sure it was my friend from uh, college, and they were having a wedding out in Calgary. So they like flew me out and paid me a thousand dollars or something to do it. That's and pretty I good. Like, I mean, I guess so for your first one. That's pretty. I definitely didn't get that. No, <laughs> I, I never got a did. Bun with some butter <laughs> <laughs> and a couple drinks. Yeah, yeah. Here's your bun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was the first one. That was in two thousand and nine, I think, or two thousand. Yeah, two thousand nine, I think. On yeah. film. No, not on film. So I, I, I started shooting digitally first, okay. and then I went to film gotcha. in 2012 oh. or 13. Yeah. Yeah, so that was all digital, and then a lot of it was friends from college, and, you know, started shooting five the first year, I think, and then, well, the first year, I think, was like one or two, right? And then mm-hmm. the second year was like five or seven, then 12, then, I don't know, 25, and then over 30, and then that started getting a little bit like too much for me. It's like, oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. So and then it, it's, I, I've slowly over the years just tried to really pull it back, and so right now I'm kind of sitting around eighteen to twenty five, depending on mm-hmm. on the year. Yeah, that's what we're doing too. Similar yeah. To that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So how did you start doing international work, and how did that come about? Um, I've always been like super determined to do my best, and um, never really content with my work like celebrating it like okay Mm -hmm. this is a great wedding but like okay what's next what else can I do how can I do better and I remember actually my our first day in college our profs looked at the hundred of us students and he was like only five of you are going to make it I was like okay challenge accepted okay exactly right that's what I would hear why not me yeah right so it was a real natural thing for me to just start thinking why can't I be shooting some of the world's best uh, weddings, you know, like why, why could that not be me? So it's just a natural progression to start thinking and focusing on traveling. Um, we have beautiful weddings here in Toronto, um, world-class weddings in Toronto, mm-hmm. but like, I don't need to stay in Toronto, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, it was natural focus on that. And, um, I've, a lot of the publications I was more drawn to, um, the ones that kind of sought out my work more, we're in the States as well. So, Such as? Fill us in. Um, like Martha Stewart or yeah. um, Brides or um, uh, more international ones like Wedding Sparrow and Magnolia Rouge and um, uh, Brides UK, um, A Little Story in Vogue. Like there's just, there's just, uh, there, there seemed to be a lot more of a demand internationally. So I just kind of kept with that and um, what started with like me trying to arrange my vacations with 
clients' vacations because they want to do a shoot in California, an engagement shoot. So I would try to arrange that there to make sure it's okay at the border and like, right. you know, and uh, and then just naturally bled into me actually getting my, my work visa for the U.S. and and uh, and really putting a focus on that. Did you reach out to planners or people in the U.S. and say, hey, this is my work? And yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I started to uh, assist other photographers in the U.S. as well um, and then naturally met other planners there and um, uh, they would, you know, pitch me some jobs that were more of their lower budgets or something or ones that the other photographer couldn't take and mm -hmm. and kind of that was a real a huge blessing uh, uh, to start with that and um, yeah I reached out to some some planners and some planners reached out to me um, uh, just asking like hey like would, would love to be able to work with you can you send over your pricing and uh, some, sometimes it started that way as well how did you market yourself because it was before Instagram like Instagram really took off I think like 2014 yeah for and I, I, I really didn't start traveling a lot until on the last past few years probably um, so Instagram was was still and thankfully I, I was able to be able to garner a lot a fair amount of followers before the algorithm hit and uh, which has only made oh. things a lot harder the the initial hit when it was two days Gosh. later you would see a post that was, initial one remember yes, it used to it was just terrible. be the cycle of whenever you posted it would go up yeah and then now you're not oh, before posts. no sorry yeah before that was amazing yeah like yeah like you could actually time it you knew when your followers yes. were looking on instagram yeah. okay probably around like nine o'clock at night would be best on a thursday or whatever it was you can mm -hmm. see the grass you have the insights and you could just say okay now and you get all kinds of likes and and a lot more followers and um i would do i did a workshop in the states and um uh, I was taking a post and I also I got a hundred followers overnight. It's like great wow. but that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, I mean not to me at least Yeah, it's a lot harder to kind of gain. I mean stories is huge now to get more yeah. of that engagement at least Yeah, like a um, an organic engagement is a lot to do with stories now It seems I feel as though the behavior has moved to stories because it's faster So originally the okay. funny part from video like so Instagram only used to allow you to put up a 15 second video Yeah and everybody was wanting that one minute, and right. now it's hard to get people to sit and watch that one minute. So they're going True. through stories before they're scrolling at this yeah. point. So, I mean, yeah, totally. My practice, at the top too, right? It's at the top. So my practice has been to everything that goes in the story, or sorry, everything that is a post goes in the story. Yeah, so like tap it's here doubled. or like. It's no, I don't even do that. Not even that. Okay. I just double it. I don't make yeah. them do anything. I don't make them go anywhere for anything. I just they'll see it if it's so in the it's story. So it's for both. And nice. if they don't hit the story, and then they're going to see it in the feed. That's smart. Or if they're going to just check portfolio, like right. weeks later, they can at least see it. But right, yeah, that's kind of my method now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Instagram is a big one. Yeah, and it was, honestly, it's Instagram those publications. Yeah. You know, seeing that I was in California for this wedding, and then when uh, couples are searching for California wedding photographers or New York or Charles, whatever it is, it's. They, they start those are those buzzwords those keywords that kind of kind of rise but Instagram with like hashtags and everything was just has been incredible oh yeah what was like or location tags right location tags yes mm -hmm. yes I want to hear uh -oh. one of your grittiest hunger stories not about food but like one job that you went for free or you did something oh. that was like super gritty because you wanted I needed it you ne I wanted it you needed it you wanted it and you knew what it would do for you or you were just passionate and wanted to do something oh gosh <laughs> um there was one wedding in California um and not that I was like forcing I was like I'm doing this but I was like I, I just stayed on top of them a little bit more I think it was the first wedding that I shot in California um they're such an incredible couple and that was primarily why I was really I mean California it was in California but like to add on top of that this couple was so immediately I felt like they could have been my best friends mm -hmm. like just such an incredible couple so sweet so down to earth um, just you can tell they were in love like real love and I was like I gotta tell her story I absolutely have to tell her story um, and I mean that was one I was just like on top of them and I remember their, their planner was asking they were like oh, look, you have a lot like she was a photographer as well the, the, the bride so oh, okay. you, you have all kinds of photographers in America <laughs> like you know but yeah. she was like no no like uh, thankfully she 
she she chose me or they they, they chose me but um I don't know if I have like a real like hunger well like after your your teacher said like oh. only five percent are gonna make it well what I was, was I was just a, I've always just been determined to be the best of the best not out of a pride sake but just yeah. Um, I've always just wanted to do my best mm -hmm. and to um, be at the top, but not out of pride's sake yeah. at all. It's just out of, out of a perfection of trying to do my best um, and perfect my art, you know? Mm -hmm. And then in, in, even when you hit like a certain milestone, it's always like, okay, Something now what? Else. No, like yeah, it, totally. It never just ends there, usually, no. especially when you keep striving like that, right? Totally, yeah. 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 And then especially it's been having a family now and it's like, where does that lie? You know, mm -hmm. like at what point do you keep traveling mm -hmm. through the year? Like how many times do you need, like the traveling for weddings is great, but that means I'm also away from my family mm -hmm. and the kids are asking, where's daddy? And I miss daddy. And I'm like, oh gosh, like you just feel a little bit more torn, right? So mm -hmm. um, that drive, has been like pulled back a little bit trying to make sure that I'm balancing both aspects of my life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've always been very, very de determined trying to be the best of the best. Um, Did you grow up in Toronto? Is Toronto your home base? Uh, technically, just outside of Toronto. Yeah. But people always ask me, Is you're in Toronto? I'm like, well, yeah, I am. Like I'm, like I'm traveling a lot and yeah, like, but if you're from Toronto, you're like, oh yeah, he's not from Toronto. I'm just from, I grew up in Burlington. Uh, we yeah. lived in Oakbrook for a little bit, then we moved to Niagara, and now we just moved back uh, in Waterdown. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always say Toronto and Kingston as a staple. Oh, okay. But I'm not from either of these places. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to say the biggest name. Yeah, the name and you're you see close by your suburb of, yeah. yeah. Do you ever get couples who are interested in doing the Chinese lanterns? The Forever go. I've had like some a little bit of like horror stories with, with with those lanterns. Really? Yeah. Like there was one, uh, <laughs> one, <laughs> one. <laughs> the bride had uh, the, these lanterns, and her mom accidentally let one go. Thought it was ready to go, but it wasn't, and it started falling and landed on her father's hair. No. Yeah. And so like the guests were running <laughs> after him, trying to take it off. <laughs> So he's running. But for the, is, is it like? Well, it did like like it, it started landing on his like head, shoulder area, and like everyone's trying to get it off of him, oh kind of thing. Goodness. So I don't know if it really did too much damage, but like, right? Yeah, Hopefully but those not. things are beautiful. It's beautiful in the sky. Yeah, like no doubt. Do you have any different stories that stick out? Well, I started into photography with. Uh, I was going on a missions trip to th Southeast Asia. I've never owned a camera before, mm -hmm. um, and that's how I got into photography. I bought a camera just for that trip. And it's three and a half months we spent time in Myanmar and Thailand, Indonesia, and Bangladesh, Whoa. and Nepal. And uh, yeah, three and a half months of just amazing subjects to photograph mm -hmm. and scenery. And um, that was probably the most crazy kind of footage I've ever taken. I wish I could go back and retake all those photos though. Now, with you know, all like the experience it's the first. You have? No, yeah, like I watched, yeah. I watched into to Sheridan with no. Like I bought Photoshop before class started and I had no idea how to use Photoshop. I was like completely, yeah, no idea, mm -hmm. no idea. So I took all those photos. Anyways, I was just totally inexperienced. Um, I got some cool shots, but I wish I could go back. Uh, I recently went to Africa uh, last two Mays ago and uh, we were photographing a, uh, a village that had never really had visitors before. Wow. And these like warriors started coming out of the, out of the just one by one, kind of out of the woods a little bit, kind of surrounding. It was yeah, that was crazy. Wow. That was were you crazy. there to document a story, or mm -hmm. were you there as yeah. like a trip? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's for an, a nonprofit organization, and we were there to, to capture or yeah, just really yeah to tell a story of of the village and trying mm -hmm. to get more supplies to this village and, um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. Wow. But you looked closely and these. Or that they were warriors 100% like you didn't want to cross them but like they were wearing like children's like hair barrettes in their hair and like anything they could find they would decorate themselves with kind of thing yeah. so um, yeah so you look close and you're kind of like oh okay but I'm still going to keep my distance <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sometimes with video, if that were me with video I'd be all in there thinking like I gotta get some shots oh today, totally like, what are you doing? 
to I know, it. right? He was like trying to find that balance of yeah. I need to get this, but I know. But like Yeah. Respectfully. And like never again will I be able to get this opportunity. So right. you know, you gotta tell the story. But yeah. Let's switch gears. Okay. Is there a trend or something that you wish you would see or you wish would go away? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I I really love the um, refocusing of tailoring a wedding day to the couple specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for a while there, um, not just even in Toronto, but outside the industry as a whole, there's a lot of focus on like making your day look pretty and um, without just like kind of copying someone else's design and aesthetic um, without any consideration of who you are as a couple, your history, your background, what you guys love and not having that kind of woven into your day. And so I, you're seeing a lot more of that now, which is, I think, so great. And I think there's a lot more focus on guest experience and um, um, the, the design is a lot more, yeah, it just seems more, more, more approachable. And more customized to the couple, yeah, in a mo- sense? Yeah, more customized to the couple. Um, and there's just a lot more uh, freedom in, in the design, um, typically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For some reason, I'm, I'm not sure what it is about California. Like, it's just, it always calls me back. And um, I was just there a week ago. And, uh, um, yeah, I just, I just really connect with, the, with, the, with those styles of weddings. Are you posting those ones on Instagram? When I can. Some of it's NDA. Mm-hmm. Just shot one, and we'll be able to post that. So I'm excited to, to show it. Nice. Just got the film back this morning, actually. Ooh. So I was like going through my computer, downloading it quickly, trying to look at it yeah. before I headed out the door. But um, so you're dying to get out of here. It's so like, you can it's go like yeah, it's like Christmas morning. <laughs> yeah. Not dying to get out of here, <laughs> like, but it's like Christmas morning. It's like oh gosh, and that's what's so great about film, right? You get to yeah. see, like you you see the moment, you take it, but then a couple of weeks later, you get the film back and you're reliving everything again. It's yeah. just. It's great. It's similar because we're not a, we don't open our footage immediately after our wedding day. Like, oh, nice. That's just not how it works yeah. in the production schedule. Yeah. Um, and so it might be a few months down the road, and then mm-hmm. we reopen a shot, and sometimes I'll see a shot. And be you're like, like, oh, I forgot I got that shot. Yeah. Because totally. it goes so fast that you're kind of getting mm-hmm. shots as you go, but then mm-hmm. so there's some that are really like, oh, wow. Yeah. That make you super proud. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Do a little happy dance. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Put some that's music how, on. Yeah get kind of nerdy about it but yeah that's what makes it fun yeah like, that's why it's a fun well that's when you know what you love what you do and you're in the right place yeah right agreed agreed yeah. yeah I couldn't agree more it's and I think for me personally it's like the happiness comes from the 100% of creative freedom that yeah weddings allow you yeah. so it's a little bit different in corporate because in corporate they're dictating what they need totally which is fair yeah. but with weddings, they're hiring you based on. I like how you tell that story. Mm-hmm. Come they and trust do, come you. Come and do mine. <laughs> don't you don't you find that when clients really trust you and there's yeah. less there's less of a shot list, let's say, um, that you do your best work. Right. Do, because do, do, do you find that like? Yeah, video doesn't get shot lists per se. Really. But like, or I guess in, in a sense where they, they're saying. like, hey, we want this shot. We want that shot. Have you seen this video? We want that. Like outside of your own work. Do you ever get those, get those comments? or? Yeah. You know what I think happens in that situation? This mm. is my guess, is that when you're given such a list like that, you know that's the expectation. So your mind's focused on, okay, I have to get that, that, that. Yeah. When meanwhile, there's a moment happening right there. You're less likely and you're to missing be focused. It because you have to totally. get that cake topper or yeah. whatever the list has. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's just because your focus of doing the job that you normally do totally. hasn't and, been straight. But like if there's if something that may be unique to this wedding that mm-hmm. the couple wants to share with you about, we would like to get this because of this, this is how meaningful it is to us, 100%, you mm-hmm. know. Um, you give me like five shots or something or whatever it is that um, that's really most important that we will we'll capture but um, I find that when, when couples just really trust your approach your aesthetic and everything and just say do your thing mm-hmm. it just goes so much more smoothly we're just about wrapped up here yeah. this has been awesome. pretty fun and informative yeah. but I'm not going to let you well, go well hopefully it's been yet. informative but I've had fun <laughs> <laughs> I think so. No, I'm not going to let you go yet because okay. I'd love to get um, a couple key pieces of advice. Okay. I always love to try and give our audience a little bit of advice, um, whether they're new photographers. Let's start there. So, okay. New photographer, what might you say? Really invest in your couples. And uh, I would say just get to know them. Like take time to really get to know them, whether it's sending them a questionnaire or... Um, 
uh, surprising them with a few gifts along the way or just reaching out to them, you know, so they don't just hear from you at the end of the, <laughs> when they first book you and then when they, when they, uh, two weeks before the wedding day, a week, month before the wedding day, whatever it is, but um, just r- really get to know them. Um, okay. The more you get to know your couple, the more you're going to be able to tailor um, their images to really reflect who they are. So, so just really get to know your couples. Because photo has a lot of back and forth with them post, pre and post yeah. wedding. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But and sometimes, especially in the, in the high end of the market, like you don't, you might not really be able to even contact the client. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of it's done through the planner and, um, so there's only so much you can do, but as much as, as much as you can try to get another couple. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's a good one. Now our very last question. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if you're ready for this. Going out with a bang. Mm-hmm. What is a piece of advice for a couple who's getting married? Yeah. Um, I would say allow, well, pay attention to the light mm-hmm. for sure. Especially for you and you and I both video and photo. Mm-hmm. Um, allow your decision making to be influenced by lighting. Uh, I find a lot of the times um, when couples are deciding maybe where to have their ceremony, if it's outdoor or indoor, like where they want to place the altar or wherever it is, um, and they don't really consider where the light's coming from mm-hmm. and, and how that's going to affect their photos. Um, so I'd say just really pay attention to the light and bring your photographer on and videographer on um, earlier in the process, like if you want to, like just to be able to help you guys um, with lighting and where things could go and what would be, what would be the best shot for you walking down the aisle while you're up at the, in, in, at the altar, mm-hmm. um, and and planners too, like bring us on earlier on in the process of that decision making so that um, we can all um, work better as a team to be able to get those shots that that the couple's wanting for sure. Do you, um, when you chat with a bride before a wedding day, mm-hmm. and for the, sorry, I call it prep, you call it getting, getting ready? ready. Same thing. For the getting ready yeah. photos, yeah. do you always kind of give them a hint? And typically it happens because makeup artists prefer natural light, mm. but do, are you always kind of suggesting that they be in a room that's well lit? Or 100%, yes. Is that kind of yeah. a message you're giving? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. and to keep that one room clean as much as possible, yeah. or a corner of that room clean. Yeah, and if we have to um, wait for hair and makeup to clean up a little bit, so we could have the same spot, that happens. That happens as well. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but yeah, what's your hot take on floor plans for the reception? Okay, do you have an opinion on podium placement during speeches? Yes, yes. Can we talk about this? Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, what is so disappointing is that most of the time the podium is right in front of a whole bunch of speakers or lights or, or microphones from the band. Yes. And it's popping out of their heads. Yes. Mm-hmm. I had, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. So, yeah. And then sometimes, like, I've, I've had sometimes where, like, it just wasn't working for me. And I was trying to figure it out and talk with video and the video was like, no, this, it has to be this way because look at this. And a lot of the times that's the like receptions are the speeches and whatever else is used a lot as voiceovers throughout the, mm-hmm. the, the video. And mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, so how do I figure this out? And, um, sometimes it is honestly just switching up lenses and, and, right. and letting that book do its thing. Mm-hmm. But, um, um, that is same thing decision process that I was just talking about right like bring us on earlier and saying podium where should it be mm-hmm. you know and let's consider where the sun's coming from if it's affecting it in any way indoor or outdoor uh, receptions um, where all the tech is going to be mm-hmm. and uh, but it, it's hard right because you have to make sure that they're, they're placed in a way where um, all the guests can see them while they're doing the speech yeah right? I feel like Podium placement is the most challenging because the, probably the best place for it is typically in front of the stage because nobody's sitting there. So yes. everyone yes. who's sitting, but which but it's not helpful for any for either of us. Can we just not do a podium? Oh, because American weddings don't have podiums. A lot of the time, you're, they, they don't. it's roaming and yes, like that's right. Or they then, speak from the head table sometimes. Yeah, but I understand like some people are just nervous up there talking, right? And I mean, for the most part. Podiums are kind of ugly, and a lot of it is the straight-up advertisement for the venue. Right. 
and I think it just kind of takes away from from the photo, from the footage. As clean as and as beautiful a background as possible, but I typically find that's very difficult to do. I know. It's always a challenge. But at least if people are aware to think about totally. the placement a little bit yeah. more, then that helps both of us. Yeah. I just, I love it when, when, when planners reach out to me as early as possible yeah. and, and couples and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And podium placement is another, another thing. We had one couple um, who invited us, me and the photographer, into their home. Okay. And we did like a, and we were with the planner, and we did like a little scout of their house beforehand. Yeah. And the is they, that where the, the wedding was going to be? Or that was where the getting ready photos okay. were going to be. Yeah. And we actually like the mother was like, "Do you want me to move that? Do you want me to move that? Do you want me to get that mirror?" And they had set everything up so we had the Gosh. most beautiful light. They had moved furniture so we had room to maneuver around. But we it's had in, mirrors put up, and it made for the most stunning. It's photo in their video. favor, right? Like it that's. Is. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a dream. It's unfortunate it doesn't happen often enough. Yeah. You know? But maybe it's just not something people are aware of. Totally. You know? Like, well, now they are. Now they are. <laughs> Here to help. <laughs> I'm the VIP collector. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, well, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Keep uh, keep on going out there. And being, yeah, you too. Being badass like you are. <laughs> and I'm trying. Feel free to uh, come back at any point. Yeah, it's, I'd love to. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Corinne. So... Let's cheers. I always end off with All cheers. right. Love it. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. All right, guys, that is it for episode number eight of season two of the VIP Collective. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to give us one of these. And you can always subscribe so you don't miss next Wednesday's episode. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week on the VIP Collective.